Welcome back. We are going to briefly review the general variance reduction techniques. And the first one that we will look at is the so-called control variate method. I'm going to describe the control variate method in its absolutely simplest formulation. You can find uh, more complete, more advanced formulations of the control variate method in uh, textbooks. So let's say that we want to calculate the expectation value of a random variable y by the Monte Carlo method. So the Monte Carlo method estimates the random variable y using a numerical model which we can express in form of a function g which depends on a random variable x. So the expectation value y is not known and we will generate samples of y during the Monte Carlo simulation and we are going to calculate the mean value of these samples. By the mean value we will estimate the expectation value y. The control variate method assumes that we can approximate the system by a simplified numerical model. So I'm going to denote this simplified numerical model by a function g star which depends on the same random variable. Now it's a different numerical model so it will give a different result. So I'm going to denote it by z. Now the method assumes that this g star function is simple enough so that we can actually calculate precisely the expectation value of z. So the method assumes that the expectation value of z is known. So let me summarize it on this slide. We have two numerical models. The original one for which we do not know the expectation value and an approximate numerical model g star which is simpler uh, so simple that we can calculate the expectation value precisely so this uh, simple model is called the control variate so we have two random variables y which is the variable that is described by the original numerical model. The variable is dependent on the random variable x. And then we have the new random variable z, which is described by the approximate numerical model. And it is also dependent on the random variable x. So they are both dependent on the same random variable x. So when you select the value for the x random variable, the input random variable, you can evaluate both y and z simultaneously. Now let me introduce a new random variable theta s. The difference between y and z plus the expectation value of z. So here the expectation value of z is known. We know this number. Thanks to the simplicity of the approximate numerical model g star. And these two y and z we can sample during the Monte Carlo simulation. So let's have a look at what is the expectation value of uh, theta. The expectation value of theta equals the expectation value of these three terms. So that would be the expectation value of y multiplied by 
minus the expectation value of z plus the expectation value of the expectation value of z, which is the expectation value of z. And here you can see that the expectation value of z can combine together. So the result is that the expectation value of theta equals the expectation value of y. And therefore, we can calculate or we can estimate the expectation value of y by the mean value of the theta variable, which equals the mean value of the difference between y and z. plus the expectation value of z. So the expectation value of z is known. So the only thing to calculate during the Monte Carlo simulation is the mean value of the difference between y and z. So we will do this by sampling the difference. So each sample that we generate will give us the difference between y and z. And in order to do this, we need to evaluate y and z by the exactly same value of the input random variable x. So we can sample value to the random variable x according to its probability density function. And using this value, we evaluate both y and z variables and we calculate the difference. So this way we can certainly calculate the uh, mean value of the original random variable y. We can estimate correctly the expectation value of y. The question remains whether the variance can be reduced if we calculate the result in this way. So this is just a summary slide. So we obtain the mean value of the original random variable y by combining the known expectation value of the uh, approximate uh, numerical model with the difference between the original and the approximate model, the difference between y and z random variables. Now what remains now is to calculate the variance of the mean value of y. So uh, we need to figure out whether by this technique we can uh, reduce the variance of these samples. Let me write again the equation for the mean value of y. So we calculate it as the difference of y and z and then we can combine it with the expectation value of z. Now, you can realize easily that the variance of the mean value of y must equal the variance of the difference of y and z, because the expectation value of z is constant, so it doesn't change the variance. So therefore, we can write that the variance of the mean value of y is equal to the variance of the mean value of the difference between y and z. Now, in the previous lesson, we have derived the variance of the mean value to be the variance of the random variable. So in this case we have the random variable uh, y minus z. So that's the variable y minus z here, divided by the number of samples n. Now let's apply the definition of the variance to our case. So we know that the variance is the expectation value of the square of the difference between the random variable and its expectation value. So that's what's written here, the expectation value of the square of the difference of the random variable, which in our case is the uh, difference of y and z, and its expectation value. 
the expectation value of the difference y and z. Now we can sort out the terms within this uh, bracket. So we have four terms here, y, z, and the expectation value of y, and the expectation value of z. Now we can sort these terms so that we put together those terms which contain the y random variable. So that's these two terms together. And then the other terms which contain the z random variable. So those are here. Now we can expand this term because it's uh, squared here. So after the expansion we have uh, this term squared here, then we have product of these two terms, yeah, and then we have a square of this term here, z minus the expectation value of z. So on this line we have the expectation value of three terms. Now when you look at the first term, you see it's the square of the difference of the random variable y and its expectation value. And the expectation value of this term is actually the variance of y. This is how the variance of the random variable is defined. So this first term is the variance of y. When you look at the last term, it's the same story. This is the variance of z. So we have this here. Now when you look at the middle term here, you see that this is exactly how the covariance of two random variable is defined. The product of the difference of the first random variable and its expectation value uh, multiplied by the difference of the uh, second random variable and its expectation value. So this is the covariance of y and z. So that's here. So as you can see, the application of the control variate method does change the variance of the mean value of the result of the y random variable. So as you surely remember, in case of the standard Monte Carlo simulation, the variance of the mean value of the result was the variance of the uh, random variable y divided by n. So when you apply the control variate method uh, there are these two additional terms in the equation and you can see that the variance term, the variance of z, has a positive sign. So it's actually increasing the variance of the result. But, but then we also have the covariance term here. Now the covariance may be positive or negative, and moreover there is a negative sign here. So uh, in case the covariance is positive and the whole term, so the covariance and when it's multiplied by the factor of 2, when in absolute term it's bigger than the variance of z, then the sum of these two terms will be negative and the variance of the mean value of y will be reduced by the application of the control variate method. So let me summarize the uh, condition under which the control variate method uh, will reduce the variance. The condition is that this inequality is valid. So the uh, covariance of the random variable y and z uh, when multiplied by the factor of 2 must be bigger than the variance of the z variable and this is possible when the y and z random variables are strongly positively correlated. So under this condition the control variate method will reduce the variance. Uh, now there are other formulations of the control variate method that will uh, reduce the variance even if the correlation is negative. 
Uh, I encourage you to search up this uh, formulation in textbooks. Now, you should still be aware that even though the method may decrease the variance, uh, the evaluation of the approximate uh, model, the G star function, may be numerically difficult. It may uh, consume too much computing time. So, even though the variance may be decreased, it may not be so uh, simple to say whether the uh, efficiency, the figure of merit, uh, is improved. So, uh, we need to measure the computing time as well as the reduction of the variance in order to figure out whether the efficiency is improved. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.